with Dan Man going in today. Just talking about a little bit of costumes. We're gonna get into, you know, um, some um, hip hop news today and all of that, man. But we're gonna start off first, Sam Man. Um, I'm gonna give it to Sam Man. He's gonna talk about the uh, funk flex, you know, coming out um on Drake. That joint was crazy. Yeah, man. So appreciate you letting me have a platform for a day. So I dropped on Hip Hop News Uncensored that Funk Flex came at Drake, man. And he was saying some things that weren't very popular amongst Drake fans, but mm-hmm. were sentiments that were expressed and shared on this podcast. Um, but I did say I would reserve my right for this podcast right here. I'm very excited to talk about it. No with you. Funk Flex, man. So if you didn't see the tweets, I'll drop a couple right now. Y'all see that big on the screen. If you can't see it, you're listening on iTunes and Spotify. So we appreciate you. So here it is right here. Notice. The rappers that don't write are the most sensitive about their music. (laughs) The ones that play quote unquote victim and use social media instead answering bars. He also said, haha, male and female rappers that don't write is called karaoke with good marketing. We should dance to the music, but I don't believe you want them songs. Hashtag just my opinion. He also said, hi, dear Drake stands. Your favorite artist has reference tracks, lost a battle to Pusha and is an actor turned rapper telling us what the rules on battle rap should be. What word should I use slash not use for the stand community? Lastly, Drake and Migos fans hate me the most. Quote, I wonder why. Boom. What's your thoughts on that, Oga? I mean, you know, my my sentiments, I agree with every single word. And anybody that goes back through the archives of the Uncensored Truth podcast and and you listen to me and Sam and his commentary, you will pretty much see that it aligns, you know, almost perfectly well, funks. We always just want people, you know, um, to, to to give bars. We talked about it with the Cardi B, Nikki. Still no bars to this day. Just a whole lot of saying this and that, you know. So, um, facts. He lost to Pusha T. You know, um, you do have an actor turn, you know, a uh, rapper trying to, you know, because we were just criticizing Drake coming out. You know, I think it was last week or so. You know, just talk and talk about, you know, um, how things should go, how people cross the line, what people shouldn't do, and we kind of said, you know, uh, we you referenced the Styles P, you know, back in the day, and him going in, you know, um, Aaliyah. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, come on, man, we come from that cloth of no holds barn, Jay Z, throw the condom on the baby, see whatever, you know, that's that's the era that we come from. Not to say that it's right or wrong, but it just is what it is. So you know, salute. Flex, real DJ, and what I love about Flex is he always wants to keep it to the essence of hip hop, which is the lyrical content. He always wants to hear. He features people, you know, on his platform like that, and he speaks the truth. He uses his platform to speak the truth to these bum ass niggas in the game. What do you say to those that will call you Funk Flex, myself, platforms like us, and other people in the world haters to Drake and those who have writers? Because of the phenomenal numbers Drake does, and he does for the phenomenal music that he puts out in people's opinion, and he puts out good music. He's a great entertainer, but or, or, or should I say, what do you say to those people who also say that because he sells the most, because he's the the most trendiest rapper right here mm-hmm. amongst the ladies and stuff, that he's one of the greatest of all time? Does that validate that? I don't I don't care about that, like the numbers are not like that. I care about hip real hip hop, you know, and real lyricism. And when you look at, you know, um the top lyricists, they probably don't make the most money. They probably don't sell the most records and they not talked about, you know, the most. So the essence, you know, of this, it's an art form. And if you have somebody, if you're supposed to be an artist or a rapper who raps or an MC. You're supposed to be able to write your own lyrics mm-hmm. and, and and you know um speak about your own life. Why is somebody else writing for you? So it takes away from your credibility. And in my opinion, you can't be the best, talk about being the best, or dictate anything when you got somebody writing your lyrics. There's too many rappers out here, the great, you know, who some of them don't even write no more. They they took it to that level. So you should be able to, you know, you I mean you're getting paid millions of hundreds of millions of dollars to do what you do. And you gotta use a ghostwriter, dude. Like, stop it, man. You're not intellectual intellectual enough to come up with your own music each and every time. I just think it take I think, excuse me, it takes away, you know, from the artist and hip hop when they have a ghostwriter. I hundred percent agree with that. So here's my thing with Drake, because I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying, but on to Drake's defense, and this is gonna be surprising oh, to some shit. people. Surprising to some people. <laughs> Um, he does write some of his records. Some he writes some. He writes some of his records, and a lot of his records they do chart and they do great numbers. My beef with Drake is this: 
you cannot be the greatest of all time if you had a ghostwriter in rap you do more than rap we're in 2018 the genre of just a new wave of music kind of started with you almost so to speak with your singing and your rapping it wasn't new amongst the people who've done it but you were the kind of the first one to really kind of jump out there and do it mm -hmm. um so <sighs> I just have an issue with him saying that he's the greatest of all time or one of the goats of all time. You can't say that without writing your lyrics. Right, but right. what do you say to those people that say Funk Flex has um, is a hater? Then just a hater. His his voice shouldn't be known. You know what I mean? He has no voice in hip hop. What do you say to that? No, I think that's crazy. That's man. crazy. As hell, yeah, he bro. definitely, you know, um, is one of the um, I would say pioneers, you know, one of the people who held the culture down for a long, yeah. long time and is still holding the culture down with the DJ and, and a different component, excuse me, of hip hop. So that's ludicrous to even say anything. A funk flex, you know, even though he had, you know, and nobody's perfect, has some questionable things about him in his past. When you come to this hip hop thing, he knows what the hell he's talking about. So I mean, crazy for saying he's a hater. He's just not a hater. And he's one of the great ways to hip hop, real hip hop still going on in 2018. And today, when you look at his platform, yeah, on Hot 97. He has the rappers coming on, and we drop them on Instagram. And if you can go spit, you're gonna be on there. If you can spit, you're gonna be right. on there. Don't bring no cell phone on there either. You gotta rap. Yep, you gotta spit. You understand what I'm saying? So, for people that say that Funk Flex doesn't have a voice, yeah, maybe today's genre, he may have put on the mantle of a troll and troll a little bit and say some things off the wall. We can't say we agree with everything he says, right, but right. to say that he's not one of the greatest of all time when it comes to DJing and when it comes to radio personalities and setting the trend for a lot of the people that we listen to today, nah, you can't say that. His word is definitely valid. Yes. And when he says things like, yo, Drake, you can't call yourself the greatest rapper of all time. You got a ghostwriter, whether he wrote one, two, four, don't matter. Right, he's right. Well, I reposted this thing that uh Fuck Flex said the other day, and I was so happy that he actually said it with his platform. He was kind of just saying about Nicki and Cardi, like, forget all the other stuff. We want to hear some diss tracks, some verses, get in the booth, shut the F up. So that's what we we had the podcast, you know, right before that. We echoed that same, mm -hmm. you know, sentiment. You know, we're obviously not on the level, you know, of a funk flex right now. We're gonna keep grinding, you know, to get there, but you know, I'm glad that he said that, and I 100% agree with that. Definitely. There was a lot of people saying that, well, why you ain't coming at Cardi? Why? Well, he did. Yeah, he did. He's not just questioning Drake. This ain't just a jab at Drake. This is a jab at any rapper who calls himself great and has mm -hmm. a writer. Facts. Your R&B singer. Facts, facts. But you're tuned into the Uncensored Truth Podcast with your brother, Old God and Sam. And we going in today. We yeah, want to yeah. welcome our listeners on iTunes and now spotify and as well always our loyal people on youtube make sure you're going to the description box and um you know go ahead and um rock with us on itunes to get the full full uncensored indeed episodes yeah man definitely saying man we going into that i want to talk about um this real quick faith to step out there and trust the fact that these people us brothers myself oh god darren kansu have lived this journey have been through these experiences have been through these trials have learned and have gained success through the formula that we want and wish to provide for you